Uh, a couple other things I want to tell you about. Um, our theme uh, for the month of January is resources. Last week was the resource of community. We're going to talk about that a little bit more uh, as the day progresses. If you have your Bible, you want to turn to Matthew 13. We're headed there in just a couple of minutes. Um, before we get to go too far, this young lady right over here, this is Jen Rays. Do you stand up right to us? Jen helps out with our children's ministry and our youth ministry. Jen is leaving this week for the uh, fine country of Guatemala and will be there for a year or so serving and will be back periodically to check in with us. But before we leave today, we're going to have prayer for Jen, uh, praying that the Lord will uh, bless her mission. And uh, along the way, if you would like to know how you can help financially support Jen, I'd encourage you to see her before you leave today. And uh, maybe you could bless her with, you know, $20,000, $30,000, whatever you got. <laughs> You'll take a check. Right? Okay, take the checks. All right. Uh, tomorrow night uh, at 6.30 in this very room, T4 will uh, have our first session. This is opportunities for those of you that, who are interested in writing. Any type, of, any type of the arts, writing, drama, music, uh, web, internet, photography, any of that stuff, this is a community group that will meet here every, week, or every Monday night. We'll have dinner at 6.30. Um, at 7 o'clock, any of you that are, would like to attend, we're going to be talking about core values. What are they? We all have them. And uh, I would encourage you to be a part of that 30 minute or so discussion. Then at 7.30, we will disband from this room. And those of you that are writers, you're going down the hall to work on that. Those of us that are musicians, we'll stay in here. Um, and continue our conversation and our worship rehearsal. T4 stands for, therefore, which comes from uh, Matthew 28, 18, and 19 and 20. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me under heaven and on earth. Therefore, go into all the world and make disciples. So this is an outreach of our church, and what we're doing is we're taking young men and women who have a passion to serve the Lord, as particularly through the arts, and we are equipping them and expecting them to leave. <laughs> Uh, we want to find them opportunities to go share, whether it's a weekend or a one-night thing. Uh, we have some folks that are involved in some very creative ministries. And uh, if, if that's you and you weren't with our meeting last week, feel free to drop by tomorrow night. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, I would encourage you to be here. Uh, this Wednesday night is called Vision Night, and it will be an annual report from the Governing Board to you for the year 2009. And a message from Pastor Colin and myself and others about where we're headed in 2010. Um, so you probably should know about that, you know, that ocean liner that we're going to buy so we can all go on a cruise together. Uh, so be here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. This is how you sign up for a community group. On your green sheet, put it in the basket or email Pastor Colin. Those will start a week from Wednesday, starting on the 20th, um, and then they'll run every Wednesday night. New to friends. If you are new to friends, which is most of you uh, in the last year, we have a luncheon for you. And uh, it comes up in a couple of weeks. And we would like to provide lunch to you, tell you a little bit about the church, how you can join the church, opportunities here. And uh, if you'd like to attend that lunch, this young lady right here in the front row is my wife. You can register sure by seeing her, or it's also in the e-link, which by the way, if you don't get the email e-link, which comes every Friday, just go to the website and you can sign up. First Sunday in February is the Super Bowl. And uh, we, uh, keeping with tradition, have the Super Bowl football game on, and we have a chili cook-off. Patrick Ladone is the two-time defending champion, who has now relinquished his control of the plastic ladle, which is given to the award winner. Uh, well, last year you got a, you got a stainless steel ladle last year. <laughs> Man, somebody's got to get tight on the budget around here. Um, but it, it happens that evening, and that day, February the 7th, is what we call Tithe Potential Sunday. Here's how this works. Um, you'll be given a card that Sunday morning that just says, this is how much money I make. If I tithe, my 10% would be this. And this is what I anticipate being able to give in 2010. This does two things for us. One is it allows the governing board and the staff to determine kind of what our budget would be for the year. And number two, it allows us to measure our financial health. Last year, we came in right at 60% of our financial potential in terms of our tithe. And so it's just a number that we use to determine how we're progressing as a congregation. And so you don't need to feel threatened. There aren't going to be guys named Guido at your front door, you know, to you, okay? But that will happen on February the 7th. And that day, what we ask is that everybody gives something. You begin to pray about it now. Maybe God wants you to give five bucks. Maybe he wants you to give 5,000. That's between you and God. But that day, everybody gives something. Last year, if you'll remember, when we announced it that night, our tithe potential was 68.83. And our offering that day was 60. 884 and some change. We made it like by dollar thirty something. And so we functioned at 100 percent We met that several times through the years. So I would encourage you to be a part of that day. Um, this is new for some of you. 
those of you that are here last February, we do a Valentine's Gala, which is ballroom dancing. And this is a dinner for you and your spouse, and hopefully you'll bring an unchurched couple. And we brought in a professional dance instructor last year that taught us how to ballroom dance. And uh, it was one of the funniest things I have ever seen in my life. Okay? This is like bumper cars for people. Okay? And those of you that were there, did we not have a good time? Wasn't it a lot of fun? Yeah. Okay? And the, I'm just going to give you a, a, just a heads up. Okay? Go take lessons now. Okay? Don't wait until that night. But we had a lot of fun, and it was a, a time where we gathered here, and uh, we're not sure where we're going to do it yet, but it's coming. And so, um, if you don't have a spouse, go get one. you got a month. And uh, if you got one, be sure to bring them to, the, uh, to that event. Matthew 13 is, a, is the parable we're going to look at today. Uh, this is the parable of the treasure. Matthew 13, verses 44, 45, and 46. Still thinking about the kingdom? What did Jesus teach about the kingdom? Here's my question to you today, my good friends. What would you be willing to do for money? What would you be willing to do for money? I got some heads bobbing like anything. <laughs> when I was a youth pastor in Michigan, I went on a youth trip with some kids from Youth for Christ, and we jumped in some Greyhound buses in Kalamazoo, Michigan, drove all the way to Florida and back, took a week. There was a boy on our bus that didn't have any money. And he not only paid for all of his food and all of his souvenirs for the week, he went home with money. Because he would do anything for money. He would eat gum off the bottom of the bus floor. I won't tell you some of the other things because it goes downhill from there. But he would do anything for a dollar or for 50 cents. But he paid for his trip by paying the price, in my opinion. So the question is, what would you do for money? What would you do for $10 million? $10 million. There's a guy in Orlando, or he used to be in Orlando, named Tiger. Tiger made a hundred million dollars a year. That's chump change. Oprah makes 168 million a year. Almost twice. What would you do for 10 million dollars? This is a survey. This is what the answers were. Seven percent of the people said for 10 million dollars they would abandon their faith. No matter what their faith is. Seven percent. Eleven percent said they'd forsake their family. So I would guess that would be 5.5% means in-laws. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen. No, 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 no. It's dangerous. 17% said they would try an illegal drug. One out of six. 27% said they'd put one of their children up on the You know that one kid. <laughs> Some of you are going, hey, that ain't a bad idea. <laughs> Ten million bucks. The kids are all like, not fair. The kids are all like, I'll put my parents up for adoption. 27%. 32% said they'd become a prostitute for two weeks. That's dangerous. 44%. They would withhold testimony of a guilty person and let them go free. For 44%. Wow. 54% of the people said they just have an affair. But 56% said they just get a divorce. <laughs> so these people want somebody new, these people want to get rid of the one they got. 56%. 88% say they would lie on a job application. I wonder if that would set a tax return. I wonder what the number would have been. 91% said they would give alcohol to a minor. That's breaking the law. 91%. 9 out of 10. 10 million dollars is a lot of money. But the price is too high to pay to get 10 million dollars to do some of those things, in my opinion. Maybe not yours, but I need to go off the bottom of your shoe. <laughs> 10 million dollars is a lot of dough. And as kingdom citizens, as you and I think about the kingdom and the treasure that's ours, what we have available to us is worth a lot more than 10 million dollars. True? Okay. So, if that's the case, and the people are willing to do all these things for $10 million, what would we be willing to do to obtain the treasure? The words that you sang a few moments ago in the song, The Wondrous Cross, when it talks about what you wanted was my life, you want me to lay down my life, that is huge. Would you really lay down your life to obtain the treasure? That's the question in the parable. Because each one of you, each one of us, we're treasure hunters. There's a treasure. We've got to go find it. You and I can become treasure hunters. If you're not a treasure hunter yet, you can be. 
I, I like the movie.